Okay, before we get too deeply into uh, the actual functionality of the program, uh, it occurred that probably ought to take a quick uh, overview of the uh, configuration of the VR software. So we're going to just go ahead and open up the, uh, the configuration program. And um, it, it's fairly simple. It is really, in essence, just an interface for editing a, um, a text file that is stored on the, uh, the local computer. At this point, uh, and it, this may change, the intention is to have the configuration stored on uh, your local machine, uh, at least you know, in, internally within this company. Um, take a quick peek at what that text file looks like and you know, what's in here isn't really important. Um, just understand that if we look up here at the path, it's in C, VR7, poster, uh, VR.CFG. It is possible to, um, you know, have multiple copies of this. And my feeling that as more people are using this, we'll probably have uh, uh, m multiple copies and you'll just you know, you can start VR with a particular config. Um, uh, you know, there, there could be uh, uh, shortcuts for, for doing that, depending on which config you want to use, or you just copy one config to the next, or just, for the most part, these things, once they're set, they do not get changed very often. Um, this morning, we're just going to go through, really, the... Uh, Kind of the highlights, uh, the things that uh, may be of interest. You know, check them, look at them, read the uh, read the help file, uh, get an understanding. There may be things in here that you want to change. Um, try it, ask. Uh, it's you know, there's there's very few things you're really going to mess up um, because we can always go back and almost every computer is going to have a backup of the original. Uh, the original config. I'm just going to go through a few of these. Um, the vector graphics, this has to do with when you're in the uh, essentially the CAD graphics window. Um, our practice at this point is to store a lot of the things, uh, to have a lot of them used uh, in, in common. So we'll note that, uh, for example, some of the, uh, you know, some of the paths that when we, um, you know, when you start a command, it may, it may pull certain parameters. You know, the, the parameters we're going to have the, you know, pen tables, um, symbols, line types, all that sort of thing. The intent is to store them uh, in a global network location somewhere and draw from those so that if the layers some, we need to add a layer uh, the layers get updated for everybody um, so vector graphics this is one of those that very few things uh, ever change but you, you may find some things that you want to tweak uh, a lot of these things are can also be set from inside the program uh, temporarily um, but Anyway, most of these set the defaults and don't ever change those. Uh, although the one thing that does that could change is uh, the layers, symbols, pen tables, all that sort of thing being stored on a network drive. Again, here is intent. The intent is to uh, when uh, when we run a backup of you know I, I, I run a um, uh, I mirror the production drive oh, maybe two, two times a day. Uh, when that happens, I also mirror this folder, uh, ZVR7, Arial Common. Uh, I mirror that locally so that if I was ever came in and there was something going on and I did not have access to the Z drive, all I'd have to do is uh, either change these things to C, change the Z to C 
either in this program or you go in a text editor and globally change or you could have a copy uh, that we would call local.vrcfig network.vrcfig um, and copy that to vr.cfg open it up and everything would uh, you know would change back back and forth between the network and the local so um, the reasons why you might have two different uh, copies but uh, that's that's the intent there so those will very rarely change except if you needed to go local uh, <coughs> image graphics uh, these are really uh, mostly set by policy uh, very few things change here as a practice we currently are using external pyramids that means when you open up a uh, um, a massive file it creates a uh, smaller copy of the file you know, like a, a half size quarter size eighth size sixteenth size that is an image pyramid that way when you're zooming and panning and moving around it's pulling from those pyramids not the original image our current practice is to use external pyramids they are stored in C jobs PYRA and under that folder there's a, a substructure a duplicate substructure of whatever folder you're working in um, so if you're three deep in some job folder it'll create the exact same structure under C jobs PYRA and the reason we do this is that then when we archive the files uh, all we have to do is take the original files, drop them onto the uh, the archive, and then clean up this pyramid folder occasionally. So there's a hint every once in a while, because those pyramids build up, you'll want to you know go back to jobs and reaccess them. So you leave them there for a little while, but in general, um, you'll want to uh, uh, go in and clean that up once in a while. Uh, we have specified to use a local drive. Uh, you can also specify to use a drive where the images are stored. Uh, we just, you know, current practice is not to do it. There's a lot of other things on this page that uh, can be changed. Typically, though, even the, the pyramid stuff, that's just an explanation. Nothing really ever changes there once you get it the way you want it. General graphics, a lot of these things are set inside the program. Uh, these are defaults. Um, and honestly, I never even change these here. I always just access them from inside the program. You know, it could be that this is how it would start up every time. Uh, again, I mostly set these from inside and don't really even uh, look at that. The general configuration tab, a um, lot of these things uh, are set it and forget it. Current practice is we are using common function keys and common macros there again so that if uh, and we decide we want to change a function key or change a macro everybody gets it uh, it is it, it would be perfectly acceptable to have a local copy of this that you edit uh, the only problem is if you ever grab the common and overwrite the local any edits would be lost um, so it just kind of kind of think about that right now. What we're trying to do is have everybody work from, from the same set of function keys and macros. And if something pops up that is useful, we'll, we'll just go ahead and throw it in there. So mostly set and forget. Try some of these tick boxes, but the only thing that we really change very often is the the function keys so if I am working on a 100 scale map I would come in here and change that to the 100 scale function keys the 100 scale macros and save and exit um, 
the other way that uh, we may end up doing this is have two different copies of the VR CFI, CFG and if I'm working on a 20 scale map call that config uh, if I'm working on a 100 scale map call it but right now we're just going in and changing uh, changing those things the XYZ digitizer uh, if we're working in VR2 and calling up a stereo window uh, we are pretty much always going to be using VR2 Cardinal systems. Uh, there are a lot of other legacy uh, XYZ digitizers. Uh, I've used several of these and they work great. Um, but we are using VR2. The one thing that could possibly change here is the stereo display mode. We are currently using um, Anaglyph for people who are training and working with VR2 on their laptops. Because uh, you can do that at home. You know, you can bring up stereo and and start practicing some things. So the uh, the difference here is that Anaglyph <coughs> uses one screen and will. Um, bring up the stereo window window with the red and cyan overlays and you put on the red and cyan glasses and everything looks 3D. Normal mode is uh, we are currently using the planar um, or the Pluraview, used to be planar, uh, the Pluraview 3D system. Um, there are uh, there's the uh, uh, several other stereo systems that are managed through your graphics cards, uh, but th that is a normal where you're working in full RGB with uh, two monitors or a, a uh, you know, like the NVIDIA uh, 3D uh, shutter glasses or, or whatever. That's normal. Anaglyph is when I just want to work in the red and cyan, and it wouldn't normally do that, but for training it is uh, is really good. Everything else here um, is set and forget. The one thing I will mention is um, the, you can have it start in roaming or have it start in static. Uh, static is when the screen remains the same and the cursor moves around in the screen. Uh, roaming is when the dot, the cursor, is fixed in the center of the window and as you move the model moves around the dot. For a compilation we're almost always compiling in roaming. So you think, oh I'm going to start up in roaming. The problem is you can't start in roaming unless there's a model open. So if you, I, I imagine if you had it reopen your previous stereo model you could have it start up in roaming. Otherwise, we leave it sets to static, or else when you open it, you'll just get a dialog that says, sorry, you can't start roaming because there's no model open, and it'll default back to static anyway. So normally, we just start in static, open a model, open a VR file, toggle roaming, T-O-G-R-O-A, and start working. Um, the mouse, this configuration, we're going to do this from inside the program. Um, there's there's functions for doing that inside of VR, and they're they're persistent. So um, the cursor, same thing with the cursor. There is a way to set the cursor from inside VR one and VR two, um, and this is one of those that's a personal preference. Once you get it the way you like it, you just pretty much leave it. Um, but typically we're doing that from inside the program because you're going to see it happening in real time. Uh, some of these don't really even uh, mess with very much. Uh, if we look at the, the VR2 input device, uh, the, the instrument that is this is hooked to right now has the uh, 
datum hand wheels most often uh, most people are going to be using <coughs> the stealth z mouse <coughs> you can figure that inside the program but you set here which 3d input device the program is going to look for when it starts so uh, most of the time when you start VR the launch window will bring up a little message that's you know it's looking for its configured 3d input device and it'll report back uh, what it finds last couple that are of any interest at all uh, the backup parameters this is really a personal preference um, you could set this to create a backup every 10 minutes and in this case uh, this is set to create a unique backup where it's you know the file name and then the uh, date time stamp of when the backup was created you could just have it set you know file name .vrb, so every time it backs up it overwrites that file so your hard disk doesn't get filled up uh, and, and this is personal preference um, the more backups you have the more chances you have to catch something that went wrong and yet you couldn't undo it um, it may be that uh, y at, at the very beginning you want to start with unique and fairly often you know, maybe you're 15 minutes uh, this one is set to unique and every hour um, so whoever's using this is you know willing to go, yeah I can go an hour and uh, if I had to go back and, and fix something uh, I'd, I would do that um, a couple little options uh, that uh, you know back up only the first workspace because it's possible that you could have four or five six workspaces open do you want to back them all up do you really want to just back up the number one workspace which is probably the one you're digitizing in personal preference uh, back up all but the last workspace uh, it is not uncommon for uh, you know the the last workspace to be opened in read only or um, open just for reference and nothing is is going to change in it uh, or it's a massive file uh, maybe it's a, a lidar file that's you know, you're not doing anything to edit any LiDAR at this stage, so I don't need that backed up every time. So, I, again, personal preference, just understand the uh, um, the parameters. Um, this thing called Z-Source, we're going to set this back and forth constantly inside the program, so there really isn't much value here just to uh, understand what some of the... Uh, what some of the parameters are again this is all set from inside the program and it is uh, it is persistent if I set it inside the program next time I start the program um, it it's going to uh, hold those hold those parameters and last thing is uh, I'm gonna worry about is file paths these are common we typically don't change these uh, again if uh, all the Python programs we're using are stored in one place they're edited there if you're drawing from them you want to draw from the most up-to-date and common version what this allows is rather than uh, if, if I take the name of a Python program I can just you know for example if I have a thing called um, do something .py I put it in this folder and then within VR I just type do something enter it go, searches that path finds it and runs it same thing with parameters uh, all the batch uh, all, all the batch programs and, and programs that save parameters have the opportunity to condition the program based on a particular set of parameters using the command parfil parameter file parfil equals and you type a name if that file is in the 
one of the directories to search. You don't have to type the whole path to the um, to the parameter file. So this way we can have uh, you know for batch offset or run DTM or any of those things. We can have parameter files. Everybody's using the same parameter file. They using it without any kind of a path because the path there is always set. Again, I am going to mirror this folder structure locally so that if I don't have access to the network drive, I can change this Z to a C. Uh, that VR7 is always created. That is the program folder. Uh, we are using a common file structure under there to store data. So all I would have to do is either in this dialog or in a, uh, a text editor, globally change Z colon to C colon, and everything would be fine to start up without the network drive. So that is configuration of pretty much all the VR um, uh, parameters. The only thing in there that I ever change on a regular basis is the function key and macro file and uh, if we're working on training going back and forth between anaglyph and uh, normal but that's not to say that there isn't something in there that you might like to change and then just leave it uh, leave it permanently for now those are really the only things that uh, I, I feel like are changing on a regular basis